One of the questions I constantly get is how to water succulents. So we're gonna cover that in this video. For those of you familiar with this channel, you'll know that I love succulents. They're some of my favorite plants to grow and to propagate. And sometimes they're called easy care plants, but I think that is a bit of a misnomer because there is a little bit of an art to growing succulents. When they are happy, they can be some of those satisfying plants with the range of color and texture that they can give you. Um, but they can be a little bit fussy and different succulents have different needs. And while succulents are considered drought tolerant plants, it can be hard to know exactly when to water them and how much to water them because the danger of course is if you overwater them, they are susceptible to rot. Generally, when you are caring for succulents, you're gonna wanna keep the soil dry. They like it dry. Their leaves are full of moisture. That's what makes them drought tolerant and they can handle long bouts of dryness. For me, I always think of a plant, uh, how does that plant uh, behave in nature when there's no human intervention? So succulents are used to living in dry, arid desert-like conditions. So they have these built-in moisture keepers in their leaves and in their stems. However, low water doesn't mean no water. So while these plants are designed to tolerate very low water or seasons of drought, when you do water them, you wanna give them a very good soak. So the first thing you're gonna do is check your soil. The soil should be fully, fully dry before you even consider watering your succulents. Sometimes it's hard to check if the soil is completely dry. I usually like to stick my finger in. Some people use a moisture meter. I don't find them super reliable. If there is any moisture, leave it. They don't need to be watered. The second step is not only uh, check the soil, but also check the plant. Is the plant showing signs of thirst? you'll start to be able to notice the difference. So these plants are nice and thick. There's no wrinkling. They're not looking thirsty. Here's, this is a little Crassula jade plant. There's a little bit of wrinkling on this leaf, um, but I just recently watered this plant. But compare that to say this one, where there's a lot more wrinkling. Here's another type of Crassula. This wrinkling is the water being used from the plant to sustain it. So it's starting to drain its water reserves to stay alive. Here's another good example of this very little dry pot. See those leaves? They're almost ready to fall off. They are so dry. So this plant needs a really good soak. They also tend to lose their color when they're thirsty. So this is a Aeonium kiwi. It's looking a little bit dull. Um, the leaves are getting very dry, falling off like that. So this is what it would look like if it was full of water. Do you see the difference in the color? It's lost the brightness. It's looking a little bit dull. So if I give this one a very good soaking, it should return to this. Here's another arrangement that has been ignored for a while. You'll see it's losing lots of leaves. So as you can see how wrinkled those bottom leaves look. The top isn't too bad. It's just doing a good job of going into survival mode and saving that water. This is the same plant I gave this. This one was looking the same. I gave it a really good soak. So here's the difference in the leaves. Full of water, nice and shriveled up. So that's the difference there. So let's water some of these, shall we? So I'm here picking out the ones that are looking particularly thirsty. Um, they haven't been watered in a while. I can see they're very dry. The leaves are a little bit shriveled and I'm gonna put them in this drip tray and hopefully they should all fit. There we go. And I'm gonna give, I'm gonna use an actual uh, watering can to make sure I'm really getting in there. I'm gonna fill that all the way up. Fill that all the way up. This one has some like 
decorative moss on top and I'm making sure that's nice and filled up. Same for this. I could also probably, wouldn't hurt to clean up some of those dried up dead leaves out of there. And really this one probably could do with a trim and a repot, but for now I'm gonna leave it. I think it'll start to come back to life. And you'll notice it kind of bubbling away. It's soaking through. Since these all have drainage, the water is going through. And then I'm gonna give it more water. I really wanna soak these. Okay, and I'm gonna leave them now to let all of that moisture soak in and let those plants come back to life. Overwatering is just as bad for your succulents as is underwatering. And the reason for this is that they have very sensitive, very small roots that can um, be susceptible to rot. And if they do get rot in their roots or their stems, they will just sort of start to disintegrate. The leaves will fall off, they'll get squishy. Um, it's not a good way for them to go. The container that you keep your succulents in is also really important. It is very important to have drainage holes for your succulents. I also like terracotta pots because they um, are permeable, they wick the water away. So it means after these have had a nice good soak, they are not sitting in soggy, wet soil. The roots are getting lots of air and that's really important for them to prevent rot. So while it's important to talk about the amount of water and how to water and the type of pot that your succulent is in, um, if it's in any pot at all, it's also really important to talk about the soil that your succulent is in because that is part of the watering process. One way to prevent rot is to use a soil that is specially formulated for cactus or succulents as you see here. Uh, cactus are kind of technically a form of succulent. So when you take a look at this soil, you'll see it's very loose. It's very gritty. This one in particular has a lot of sand added. I believe there's perlite um, and lava rock. Not as much organic material as say like an indoor tropical potting mix. Soil that succulents definitely do not like is clay. This is my garden. We have a lot of clay soil. So if I'm gonna be planting my succulents into the soil, I make sure and supplement this clay with the cactus mix. For example, this whole area, um, this is outdoors. You can kind of see there is some clay back behind, but I mostly added all cactus mix here before putting these succulents in. And the reason that's important is that this soil, it kind of lets the moisture pass through it. It'll stay a little bit moist, but it won't lock in or hold the moisture. Clay soil stays soggy, stays wet. It gets very hard. And that is like a death knell for succulent type plants. They want the water to pass through. I also want to mention my, what I call my dry propagation tray. This is where I, if I find a succulent leaf that I want to propagate, I throw it into this tray until I either find space for it or until it starts to grow. Oh, there you go, a little uh, baby succulent. I'm often asked, do I water this? Do I mist it? No, I absolutely do not. This stays completely dry. This does not get watered at all. I um, just, keep things in here, they will start to grow aerial roots because they are looking for moisture and it will encourage them to start growing little pups. I do not add any moisture to this as I do find it encourages pests. It looks like I've got a little bit of a pest issue that I need to address anyway, um, but when you um, add any sort of moisture in this situation, um, it's more likely that things will rot or it'll attract things like mealybugs. Once those little leaf propagations have been planted and have grown roots, that's when I water them. And this I will either water or I might mist it just because they're sort of delicately in there, but I don't generally mist plants. So I might mist them just to prevent them like 
from coming up out of the soil, but once they get a little bit bigger, say to the size of this, you'll see these are well rooted in here. These I don't mist, these I use um, a normal shower hose head. My final note is about succulent dormancy. Some succulents, such as these aeoniums, for example, they go dormant uh, here in the summertime in California. You'll notice they'll drop a lot of their lower leaves. They'll start to curl up and retain their moisture. Um, it's a protective measure for surviving drought. It doesn't mean your succulent is dying or dead. It just means it's going through seasons. It's a little bit like a deciduous tree losing its leaves. I've got a good example of this here in my front yard. It is July right now. These aeoniums are on uh, drip irrigation. They are protected from a lot of the direct sunlight. We've got some bird of paradise trees here, so they're a little bit out of the direct sunlight. Well, these aeoniums, they are also on a little bit of irrigation, but they get a lot more direct sunlight. You'll notice they have dropped a lot of leaves. They're kind of shriveled up a little bit. So these plants are basically doing whatever they can to just survive the hot July summer. If your succulent has gone dormant, this is not something to worry about. You don't want to overwater it as it is still susceptible to rot. Just monitor the soil when the soil is fully dry, give it a water then, and just be patient. It's just going through seasons and it will come back. It is also worth looking up your specific succulent as say aeoniums go dormant in the summertime, but there are other succulents that go dormant in the winter. Again, um, it's just different seasons for different plants. Hopefully this has been helpful for your succulent care. If you have any questions, please be sure and put them in the comments. I'm happy to help out where I can. And don't forget to follow me on my other social media channels. I'm on TikTok and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe.